Next, I'm going to change gears and talk a little bit about some devices that we haven't shown yet. I want to focus now on phones and small tablets. Um, now, as you've seen in a bunch of our presentations, and as Terry mentioned, Windows 10 is designed for a, is designed for a wide range of range. But what we're doing is tailoring it to be appropriate in its user experience for certain form factors. And what you've seen so far is the tailored version of Windows 10 for devices that are eight inches and above. So that's laptops, desktops, two-in-ones, and even the eight-inch tablet that you saw me bring out on stage before. What I'm going to show you now is the Windows 10 version that's tailored for devices that are smaller than eight inches. So think about small tablets and a wide range of phones at all, size, at all sizes. I'm going to show you a build that we are working on now to roll out to insiders in a little while. It is a little rough. Again, we're going to be looking at code that's being developed. But let me show you what the experience is like <coughs> when we have Windows 10 on a phone or small tablet. So uh, what I have here is a Lumia 1520. Let me 1520, let me see if I can go a little farther. This is a Lumia 1520 running a recent build of Windows 10. And I'm going to show you, first I'm going to focus just on the core experience and give you a sense of how it aligns with the PC, how it'll be a great companion to the PC. So let me unlock. And the first thing you'll notice, the start experience is quite familiar to people who've been using Windows Phone in the past. But if you look there, you can see in the background, I've got a full bleed customized background image, a nice personalization feature that a lot of our users have been asking for. If I pan over to the right, you'll see we've promoted the recently installed apps right to the top of the app list. So they're really easy to find when you're installing and using apps. So another nice. Uh, feature that we've been getting lots of requests for. Uh, I want to show you the Action Center, which has added some new features and is now synced up with the PC. I can do things like dismiss single items that are shown here as notifications. I can now expand the action buttons just like you saw on the PC. So I get a completely consistent and familiar experience going from one device to another. Um, I also want to give you a quick look at the settings experience here, which again, we've implemented as a universal app to be the same across the PC small tablets, tablets, and phones. It's a little more organized and easier for people to find things, something we've been getting a lot of requests for from people. Oh, look at this. I'm getting a text right in the middle of my demo. That can't be a coincidence, can it? Um, so I also wanted to give you a quick look at how we're evolving input and messaging, which we view as part of the core experience of phones. So uh, here I'm getting this text from Marcus. When is Cortana going to send her first email to the team? Well, she did that already. You guys saw that. Now I'm going to reply. And of course, I think you all are familiar with the WordFlow keyboard on Windows Phone today, which is terrific. It has built-in shape writing. It learns about the things that you type. Um, we've made some improvements there. I'm just going to give you a quick look here on this large screen phone. I can pull the keyboard right over to the right and then do my shape writing with one hand. So that's kind of cool. But I'm not going to do that right now. Because the theme for today is this natural interaction and lighting these devices up with natural interaction like speech. You'll notice as well, right there above the keyboard, there's now a microphone button. So anywhere I can type, I can now talk to reply or, or put text into the phone, which is a super handy thing to be able to do throughout the phone. I sent it to Terry Meyerson, and he's going to forward it. Hashtag, let the good times roll. So there you see, I talked to my phone. Surprise, surprise. My text was recognized, but notice some of the details. I said Terry Meyerson, which of course is not a word in dictionaries, but he's a contact that I have, so that utterance was recognized, capitalized. You notice it, uh, it got the hashtag as a keyword. It put some punctuation at the end of the sentence. It will do these things automatically so that when I talk to the phone, the speech system is sophisticated enough to make the text come out just right. So let me send that text message along. Now, the last thing that I want to show you about the core experience on the phone, and then I'm going to talk about a bunch of value add across all these devices, is how we're going to improve the messaging experience. And to do that, we're going to switch over here to a motion study, because this code is not yet ready for me to demo in a real build. What we're doing is we're building in support to the messaging app so that IP-based messaging systems, like the ones that mobile operators are rolling out, 
and Skype can be elegantly integrated right into messaging. So here you could see I was having an SMS conversation with Peter, but I switched over to Skype, and now, with, because the Skype network is so capable, as Peter is typing, as I'm getting my reply, you can see it, was show, it showed that he was typing, and the message came right in. We're going to be doing work to detect these Skype-capable endpoints and automatically move to Skype so that users get the richest possible messaging experience use, that will communicate with the widest range of people, everyone on a mobile operator network and everyone on Skype, including the cross-platform devices on which Skype runs. So we're thrilled to be building that part of the experience with our Skype team right into messaging, right into calling, and so you'll have that rich Skype experience as part of the phone. So, what you saw in the core experience of the phone and small tablet version of Windows 10 is it's tuned for devices under 8 inches. Um, it's designed to go with your PC as a great companion that's consistent and easy to learn. And with the Skype capability, we're going to enable the widest range of people to communicate with each other richly using messaging, calling, and video. But to get a full view of the kinds of things that we're putting on phones and small tablets, and today it's not even a complete view, but to get the full view, I need to talk to you about universal apps. Because we are building a wide family of universal apps that will ro round out the experience on phones, small tablets, and PCs. Um, you all. You all are aware that we have a platform for writing these universal apps that runs across devices, phones, tablets, PCs, even the Xbox. Um, and what we're doing is creating a family of apps that will be built in that will give our customers everything they need for modern productivity. So I'm going to show you a series of these apps. I'm going to show them to you on the phone and the PC, and I want you to think about how they make the experience um, rationalized and easy as you go from device to device, and they offer that mobility of experience that Terry was describing. The first one I'm going to focus on is Office. I think a lot of you know our Office team has been hard at work creating killer universal apps for Windows. And we've shown some early looks at these, some early looks at these at some conferences like our Build conference, but so far only on the PC. Today I'm going to show you a preview version of these on the phone. And just to be clear, um, what you're seeing are Office apps that are designed for Windows 10 and designed for touch. But we're going to continue to evolve our full Win32 Office apps specifically for the PC. These ones were made for devices with touch screens. So let me uh, switch back over here. I'm still on the phone. And what I'm going to do is start with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Word, Excel, and PowerPoint will be included in Windows 10 on phones and small tablets. And they're going to deliver a consistent, highly rich, and highly complete Office experience. So uh, as I open up Word, you see I get the familiar recent document list. I'm going to choose this uh, pretty sophisticated Word document. And it first shows up here in page layout mode, but I'm going to use this button to switch to reflow mode, which is optimized for viewing on a touch-based device like a, a phone or a small tablet. And you can see here it's a very rich, complete Word document. The formatting is entirely accurate, but you really get a sense of the richness when I bring up the app bar down here at the bottom. Because what we've done is nicely format the familiar office ribbon right into the app bar experience. Here's the Word Home tab, where I have all the formatting commands that I would expect to find in Word. I can switch the ribbon over to one of its different tabs. I'll switch to the Review tab. And you can imagine, if somebody sends me, I'm collaborating with somebody on a Word document, They've suggested some changes. I can now use the review tab that I use all the time on the PC to move from change to change, accept a change, reject a change, add comments, read the comments, do my collaboration while I'm on the go. And with a device like this, you get a nearly no compromises experience in terms of completeness, fidelity, and richness as you're trying to create documents or collaborate with people on documents. We think this will be a great benefit to everybody trying to be productive on their phones. Now, I'm not going to show you Excel just in the interest of time, but I am going to show you PowerPoint. And so, um, once again, you'll see I open PowerPoint. It's that familiar office look with the recent list right there. I'm going to open a very large and complex PowerPoint presentation. Here we go. 
And I want to point out that recent document list, it does roam from device to device, from version of Office to version of Office. So if I'm using full Win32 Office on my PC and editing a document in my OneDrive or OneDrive for Business, that recent list roams across devices. When I open up this PowerPoint presentation, I want to show you once again, here on the bottom of the screen, we've brought the familiar Office ribbon right to the phone's app bar experience. And I can switch here to transition view, to slideshow view, or to review view, just as I did on the phone. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I want to show you how great a PowerPoint presentation can look when it's projected using any of the recent phones, which have hugely powerful processors and very capable graphics parts. So in this case, I'm going to pan through this, and you'll see, watch the screen, how smooth the animations and transitions are. That's an on-slide animation. I'm going to keep going. You'll see the hardware-accelerated slide transitions, and then again, a slide animation. And once again, hardware-accelerated transitions, slide animations. And all of that I'm doing today with a wire, just because we have lots of people doing wireless in here. But of course, we support Miracast, so you can present wirelessly. Um, with these Office apps, and as part of Windows 10 on phones and small tablets, we'll also support wireless printing. So we think this version of Office, tailored for Windows 10 on touch devices, will give people a very complete, easy-to-use, consistent cross-device productivity experience.